The first ship I'm going to present you is the FPSO, which stands for Floating Production Storage Offloading. What is that? Well, the first thing you have to know about offshore oil and gas production is that when you go to ultra deep waters, you need production platforms that actually stand on one position floating. And that's the first name of this acronym. Of course, it produces oil, but what does producing oil mean? The operation of producing oil basically means it separates oil from some contaminants that you find with it, such as water, mud, gas, and other components that are not necessary for the products we want to make from oil. Well, and how does it work? This is a riser balcony. The riser balcony has the lines that actually elevate the oil from the reservoir to the seabed and all the way up to the FPSO. Here, the oil goes to these modules. The modules are responsible for separating oil and gas and water, gas treatment, gas compression, gas reinjection, oil treatment, water treatment, water reinjection, and a whole lot of things that is designed to make this power unit entirely independent from the onshore world. Well, not entirely, but mostly. The whole gas treatment and compression parts are on the front of the ship because gas is very unstable and it's very dangerous, very flammable. You have to keep it as far away as possible from the ship house which is where people generally work and live as they are taking shifts on the ship. Then the oil treatment system is made on the midsection of the ship as where the water treatment is quite near the powerhouse and the ship house as well because it doesn't present that much danger to it. Of course, as any offshore oil and gas system ship, this has an alley deck at farthest away as possible from the, the gas treatment and the flare tower. And that's one important aspect of it. Gas may be burned in one of those and it's much dangerous to burn this gas close to any of these structures. So what they do is they build this huge flare tower in which at the very tip there is a spark that lights up the gas and it burns. Of course, for environmental reasons, you cannot burn all the gas. And in fields that are rich in gas, you have to reinject some of those. But back to the helideck. That's where people come to work and where they go back to their homes every month or so, or every two weeks or every three weeks. This ship does not, although I kept for aesthetic reasons, I kept the propulsion system here. It is not necessary because actually this is a stationary unit, so it won't move anywhere. It's moored to its position, no need for engines. This unit counts with three cranes to transport goods from one point to another in the whole platform. On these points, which we call In these points, which we call laydown areas, all the communication systems are on top of the ship house. And yes, of course, this is an FPSO, floating production storage. Yes, the whole inferior section of the ship is dedicated to storing the oil that is produced. A ship of this kind can generally process 12 million cubic meters of gas every day and it produces up to 220,000 oil barrels a day. An oil barrel is approximately 159 liters of oil. So it produces that times 220,000. Well, you make the math. You know, it's a lot of oil and you need a place to store it. And that's what the whole tanking area is for. And of course, it's also offloading. Once the storage area is filled, you have to transfer this cargo to another ship, generally a tanker. And that's why it's also offloading, which is the operation of transferring this oil. And it uses a hose that transfers it to another ship. In case one of those doesn't work, 
there's another one in the back as well. This is a gas treatment plant in, and an oil treatment plant. So there are some risks associated to this activity. Safety is a main concern of the oil and gas industry. And that's why the ship counts with rescue boats on both sides, just like a real one. You'd see two to four or even more of these rescue boats, which are used in case the people actually have to leave the ship to save their lives. I had the amazing experience of boarding one of those for a day. And I tell you, it's amazing. They're huge, heavy machines. I mean, it's so complex. I don't even know a tenth of the equipments that are embarked in one of these constructions. And it, it's really amazing to see one of those personally. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've been in one of those ships once, please write down a comment and let me know what you do there. What is your work like? Or what was your experience like? If you visited, also let me know. And of course, if you like this video or if you know somebody who likes it, share with a close friend or a family member who enjoys ships. Remember to subscribe, click the notification icon and receive a weekly video on a new structure. Next episode, we'll see another one of those ships being shown to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.